Git integrations with NeoVim are all over, but what do the type of integration actually means for a daily workflow? How does it affect focus and productivity? And which of them, or what combination, is really the holy grail of NeoVim and Git? There's this quote, focus intensifies by getting used to not being distracted and can improve with practice. This is by Cad Newport written in Deep Work. This means that the brain can be taught to focus by avoiding distractions. This also reminds of a principle that says, neurons that fire together, wire together. This was proposed by Donald Hebb in the 1940s, and it essentially means that when we're focused on a task for longer periods of time, we're literally forming the brain connections and solidify them so that our brain gets used to focus mode and works more efficiently. What does this have to do with GitOps, you might ask? Great question. Well, it turns out that every time we shift our focus from a certain task, especially by changing environment and context, our brain breaks certain pathways and resets processes of thinking. Imagine working on a project, focusing on how to build a certain logic, and at some point you'd like to commit your changes so, so that you don't lose your work, or you just want another set of eyes on your code, and by that you want to push your changes to a remote branch. If at this point you'd shift your focus over to a GUI with shiny colorful buttons and lots of visuals, these neural pathways we talked about earlier have stopped and our brain shifts its focus to another task. It doesn't have to be this way. So in this video, I wanna show you a couple of things that I used to do, one that I still use and one that's a complete game changer for me. Let's get into it. To start, we can minimize this pain by replacing a GUI with a TUI. By that, I mean using a terminal interface that doesn't require to pop another window. LazyGit is incredible for this task. It pops in the terminal, provides an interface with everything you need for simple tasks, from exploring the commit history or the ref log, checking out diffs, and more. But this still requires switching context and moving away to another window. Using something like fterm, for example, as a floating terminal, will provide the same experience, but on top of the session of NeoVim you're currently running at. The same can also be run in a Tmux pane on the side where I can move in and out from and to, zooming in and out, and keeping it right next to me. Similarly, I can use a Tmux window for doing the same thing while using Tmux ability to jump back and forth between two last used windows. I covered Lazy extensively in the video up here if you want to go in depth into what it can do. And if you still like the idea of having it, you can even bind it to a Tmux pop-up like I'm doing right here to enjoy it within your Tmux sessions. The only benefit in doing that over fterm is the fact that it's bound only to Tmux and you don't have to have NeoVim running in the background to reach the floating pane. If you're still unsure about Tmux, here's a complete guide taking you from zero to beast mode in no time. With all that said, however, LazyGit in all its forms, regardless of how we can run it, is still its own interface. Don't get me wrong, LazyGit is one of the most powerful interfaces out there. It's definitely something I keep close by for more complex operations, and I use it almost every day. For small repetitive actions, however, of fetching, pulling, staging, committing, and pushing, I think that while LazyGit is more than capable, it snaps me out of context. Maybe for you, the laser-focused viewer, this isn't the case, but this, like many other external interfaces, proves to steer my focus away from the task at hand and create friction. And since I'm all about removing friction, LazyGit doesn't cut it as a usual interface, if that's the goal. My holy grail of Vim operations had always been one. If you're a long-term Vim user, Tim Pope needs no introduction. But for the few who do, just check out his GitHub profile to learn about everything he had done for the Vim community. There's 99% chances that you've got a Tipo plugin installed right now on your machine doing some heavy lifting for you in your Vim environment. One of the many plugins Tpop created, and as hard as it is to compete with a significantly popular one, Git Fugitive is this. All things Git within Vim. Fugitive brings Git closer to home. This is the status pane showing untracked, staged or unstaged files. After staging a few hunks, or even entire files, which we can do with a dash command in Fugitive, and we then create a commit using, again, Fugitive of course, the status will also update the unpushed commit in the same pane. 
Hitting a change will open the diff below, so we can explore the changes with ease. We can understand the status better than we do with the CLI, and all that without ever stepping out of the ID. When Fugitive sends back the response from GitHub, it contains a pull request link that I can then hit by using Tmax's URL detection plugin, I'll leave a link below, which I then use to pop up the browser and open a PR on the go. The status, as well as staging, checking commit logs, or just exploring git blame, which I love so much, are just a couple of keystrokes away. And so for the longest time, Git Fugitive was my go-to for anything that required straightforward Git operations within Vim. I'd use Git signs for the visual hunks and would stage them and handle within Fugitive. Fugitive is way more powerful than what it shows on the surface. It can tackle almost any Git requirement. Bisect, cherry picking, even Git config are all packed inside. Everything done with verbosity and lean finesse that's only reserved to TPOPs plugins. They're not fancy, but they simply work. Here I'm switching branches, checking diffs, and even getting glimpses into remote branches. Everything from Fugitive's Lean menu. I covered a lot about this combo in this video, and I highly recommend checking it out. But there comes a time that even your most precious handy tools need to recognize a modern successor. Fugitive was introduced with a new baby brother, written in Lua, packed with gems, and slowly takes over the golden standard for NeoVim Git interfaces. NeoGit is everything Fugitive is, but more. It's slick, works right within NeoVim, but it brings more to the table. Looking better, more intuitive, and it comes with a few banger features that will blow your mind. Let's get into it. Once installed, NeoGit is ready to be called from within the editor. The NeoGit command simply pops the status like the G command with Fugitive. Much like its predecessor, the status shows untracked, unstaged files with collapsible sections. Tab toggles them and the sections, and they're easy to guess. Hit S to stage, U to undo or unstage. Like all other interfaces, all commit messages and even reflog lines can be expanded further and explored if you need to see the changes. This is a repetitive theme with NeoGit. It's not as fancy as LazyGit, but it is as powerful. It follows Fugitive's simplistic design, but also provides a UX with the user in mind. Everything is just better. C will open the commit panel, and man, here's the first banger. You can do an interactive flag switching that you can play with. Simply write the flag you're interested in, like minus A, or minus E for empty commits, and even more random options you probably didn't use all that often, like equal C to reuse a commit message, or even GPG to sign the commit. When a flag is mentioned, NeoGit will highlight it so that you know what's been taken. When you're ready to move on, use the menu below for hints. C, again, will commit the changes, but you can also amend, squash, and add other rebase options. When you're ready to move on, the commit message and description opens up for editing and finalizing the commit. Q finishes the process and now you're ready to push. Similar to other tools, NeoGit shows the commit ready to push and you can go back and explore the change navigating the view into the commit. If you're uncertain, at any point just hit the question mark and the menu pops where you can find almost any option you can think of, ready to go with one keystroke. P will open the pull menu and capital P will push at any point. NeoGit powers doesn't end here. Hitting LL will pop a log buffer with commits you can open by default with the blame toggled on and review the changes made. The logs are shown in tree mode, something up until trying NeoGit, I had my own CLI long one-liner doing the same. As this is the most intuitive way for me to understand the structure of my Git head. I'll be honest here, this view becomes my favorite way to view changes, far more than any other interface. So slick and easy on the eyes. But wait, check this out. With NeoGit, you can stash changes. View the stashed stack, pop and list, but the cherry on top of everything is the view giving you a glimpse into the stash changes. I don't even know why I'm so excited by this. It's the feeling of finding out how to do something so smoothly instead of the annoying flow of typing repetitive CLI commands I was so used to for doing the same. I'll just add one side note that ever since discovering Git work trees, my stashing needs dropped to nearly zero. But in some cases, I still do use it and having it in NeoGit is a blessing from the heavens. NeoGit is paired with Diffu, so let's just check what Diffu does to help us better understand changes. Diffu open opens up both the differences marked with additions and line removals, similar to what you probably used to from GitHub or GitLab, as well as side menu marking the files changed and even the lines added and removed. I must admit that for a while I've been pushing commits to remote branches just so I can enjoy the same view on GitHub, and Diffu completely eliminates that need. Even without staging the changes, I can view them like I would in a pull request waiting to be merged. 
if you think I'm done with NeoGit surprises, think again. NeoGit is customizable in so many ways, covering way more than most what standard plugins do. You can even tell it how to fire. For example, here I send it to a floating pane within NeoVim. Like others, this feature is experimental, but just imagine where the plugin is going to be in the future. I'm so happy to have discovered it, and NeoGit is officially my new NeoVim Git interface and the clear winner in my mind when it comes to zero friction IDE GitOps. To make NeoGit a little bit more approachable, I migrated most of my fugitives command into this small subset of key bindings. Liturgy S will pop the status and Q by default closes it. As shown before, this is great to both understanding the status of changes as well as expanding on them. And while the older ways of Fugitive provided a similar option, NeoGit's UX is superior in every way. Liturgy C was converted to git commit using NeoGit, where similarly I can use GP to pull or G capital P to push. This is mainly a safety feature so I don't make mistakes and push by default. Keep in mind that different from Fugitive, GC here pops the commit panel. And if you're after a quick commit by providing a message and just sending it away, just hit C again. So leader GC, then C, type a message and go back to coding. Two more integrated bindings in this file aren't NeoGit specific and I still need to figure out whether they belong here or not. And by the way, if you're viewing this and have a better way of achieving these without going to other plugins, please do let me know. So branches work best for me with Telescope. It's a picker that's dedicated for that and I use it directly. The same thing I do with Blame. It's just popping for me with Fugitive and it's the easiest way to go. I'd like to remove Fugitive altogether and migrate fully, so please let me know in the comments if you have a better way. With that in mind though, let's check the last missing link, which also kind of solves the git blame issue I have. The holy grail of git integrations and NeoVim will never be actually complete without mentioning git signs. It works best as a sidekick and I could not work without it. On the surface, it adds signs of lines added or removed and offers to stage them as new hunks ready to be committed. So far, an essential for every user but this thing packs much, much more. The list of options is something you'd need an hour just to go through. Here are my highlights and how I use it. I'll just mention that everything I show here is already on my dot files in the gitsigns.lua file, but most of it is coming from the gitsigns project docs. So with the configuration in mind, let's see the power of gitsigns. To start off, circling around changes in the code, I have the convention of brackets coupled with C to search for previous or next changes with opening or closing brackets respectively. Under the hood, this calls the next or priv hunk. Sometimes, when you want to have large hunks, it's nice to see a focused preview of the change even before staging. And for that, I use leader HP for a hunk preview. When I'm ready to stage, I use leader HS for hunk stage or leader RS to hunk reset. I can reset the stage or the entire buffer using capital R or capital S, but I tend to stay away from that and I don't use it a lot at all. Beyond others, one nifty feature I like to toggle a lot is the inline blame option. That can be either run with git signs, toggle current line blame, or in short as configured with leader TB to toggle the blame. This sets the last committer on the line I'm in with a small delay so that it doesn't interfere too much. This is off by default, but when I need the information, I'd either pull fugitives blame as shown before or just use this one. Git Signs is the modern version of Vim Git Cutter, if you're wondering, and I've migrated to it about 18 months ago and never looked back. So for those of you who missed features or were toggling the git status or the diff to learn the changes made, this one's for you. Removing friction from any workflow is key for success in my eyes, not only when coding, but any type of work that requires some level of focus. And that's why my process is never complete if my entire environment isn't supportive of this goal. This is why I created Session X, an open source session manager packed with goodies for Tmux users. I have a video covering everything you need to know right here. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.